Okay. Welcome back. We're going to do another video today. And today we're going to do a video of Light Fury from How to Train Your Dragon. So this one's going out to Edie, whose birthday is this week, and Jarvis, whose birthday is today, and Fraser, whose birthday is today. There you go, guys. We miss you. Happy birthday. Okay, so we're going to do a... Uh, oh, also we had a request for darker lines. Apparently my lines were too light and they were hard to see, so I'm going to use now, instead of a 5H pencil, I'm going to use a Terracotta Prismacolor Color Race. Okay, so these are erasable pencils. You'll often see them in videos with animators. So uh, if you ever see a video with an animator who's drawing in color, it's always going to be one of these. So they come in these packs. I think I have one here somewhere. Here we go. So they come in these packs. You can get a pack of 24, and it's got almost every color from yellow, pink, purple, gray, whatever. Okay, they even put white in there. So that would be for putting a glint in an eye after the fact, okay? Okay, so here we go. So now what you want to do when you draw is you want to, what's called enveloping. So we want to envelope. So here we go. Enveloping is just putting the top and bottom of your drawing. So side to side, side to side, okay? And now these lines are very light. Obviously I'm going to go darker now. I wouldn't go this dark normally. Uh, but for those of you who can't see the lines, this is what they are. Okay, so there we go. So basically I've drawn a box that is there to there to there, okay? And we're going to fit Light Fury in this box, okay? So what we want to do is we want to do a gesture line. So a gesture line draws, it basically refers to a line that goes right down the center of your, in this case, dragon, okay? So I'm going to do a gesture line like this. And the reason we can do this just as a straight line if we wanted, but it's better to put things on a lean. So you want them to lean back or forward. Okay, so now I'm going to do the head. And the head is going to be a oval. Okay, an oval that's on a nice lean like that. We're going to do a profile shot of her head or his, I don't know. I've never actually seen this movie, so... Uh, okay, so it's either a boy or a girl, I imagine, and I really don't know which. I probably should do my research, but it's too late for that now. Okay, so there's the body. So now bring that body way down, and then the legs are going to fit in here, okay? So the legs here and here. Okay, so there's the front legs. Okay. Now we can do the back legs. The back legs just sit here and are there, and we're going to imagine the top of them here and then down there, okay, because we're going to put a wing in front. So the wing starts about here, and the wing shape is this, okay, so I'm going to rough in the wing shape. Down we go, down we go for the wing. And back, and it attaches there, okay? So now I can just start to draw that wing in a little bit. So a little harder on the pencil, a little harder on the pencil. I hope you can see these lines. I really don't want to... Oh, I'm just so trained in one way to do very, very light lines at the beginning, and then I've been preaching this for years, so it's really hard to break out of that now suddenly. Okay, so now there is the cartilage of the wing or the bone of the wing or the strength of the wing, okay? And the rest is fabric or I don't know, whatever it happens to be made out of skin, I guess. Okay, so there, there, and there are the ridges of the wing, and then we're going to connect those now. So we'll just go like this, simple connect, simple connect, and one long one. I'm going to rotate the paper just a little bit here. Okay, so there we go. And then roughly the same over here, but slightly lower because we want it to look like it's in the distance. It's a little further away. We're going to put the other wing so the other wing can drop all the way down to there. Okay, like that. So far, so good. 
Okay, so now let's do the head shape. So the head shape is flattened on the top and then drops in to the nose. We can put the nose there. Has a little bit of a chin, a little bit of a cheek, and then attaches sort of there. Okay, now you have a little, I don't know, detail. Could be a horn. I don't know what it is. I really should do my research. Okay, and then there's some detail here, okay? <clears throat> and then there's also a further one back like there. Okay, so there we go. Darken this in a bit. And now we have to put in the eye. So now if you draw a line very, very lightly across here and across here to line it up, the eye is going to be this shape. So it's basically a lemon, a lemon on its side. If you go to the kitchen, ask mom for a lemon, and just draw a lemon, okay? And then there's that big pupil, or sorry, big iris, and then pupil here. Now if I put a little glint in there, and I'm gonna put a little glint here, then when I color that in, looks pretty nice okay little nostril there we go there's our sketch I can bring this leg in now because I've drawn the wing in front okay some little claws little claws here okay so there we have it there's our sketch now we'll move on to pen. So for pen, I'm using the Pilot V razor point again, but you don't have to get hung up on what I'm using. It's really important just to use whatever you have. Like you might think that you're going to be a better artist because of better equipment. Uh, in some cases that's true. It would be hard to mix acrylics and oil together and make a good painting. But if you have a pen or a pencil at home, just use a pen or a pencil. It's really not about the pen. It's the technique okay so now always the same so we start off somewhere where we're not going to make any mistakes when we're practicing actually you know what I'm going to change my line here I'm going to make them bring that neck back in there just a little bit okay and we won't worry about that we can oops we won't worry about that we will uh, erase that later okay so you caught me with an oops right in the middle of my drawing here Okay, so start where you're not going to make any mistakes. Start with the easy lines, ones that are pretty easy to follow around. And really, you want to turn your paper to suit your line, and also you want to stay away from any wet ink. Okay? So I'm going to turn my paper this way for this line. I find that pulling lines towards you on this arc of your hand is easier than pushing lines away. So I don't generally push my lines, I usually pull my lines, okay? So I'll pull my line this way, turn my paper, especially long lines, you want to use that. You want to use that hinge of your wrist for pulling lines, okay? Now I'll stay away from that line because it's still wet. So I'll go down here, we're going to kind of jump around a little bit on this one. And you can see where refinement really comes in with the black pen. If you uh, really are super messy with your sketchy, it doesn't really matter. If you sketch messy, that's fine. If it takes you 100 lines to find the right one, go ahead and use 100 lines. Uh, but then when you get to refining, when you get to the drawing stage, you want to uh, pick your favorite line. Okay, I'm going to stay away from that line for now. Still wet and I don't want to smudge it. Okay, so now when it comes to these legs, I don't want to go all the way across there. So what I'm going to do is I'm just going to bring that line in just a bit and then curve it back out. Okay, so I'm just going to keep a little indicator and then a little indicator here. And here. Okay, so I'm going to have this come in just a bit. So there's this kind of this gap here. The human brain really likes those gaps. So you want to leave those little gaps every once in a while. Okay, 
few more toes or claws as the case may be. Okay, I pushed that line. Didn't feel great, so I'm going to pull this line all the way back down, okay? So I'm going to come down to here and I'm going to stop right there and I'm not going to attach that. That looks really nice, okay? I feel like I need one more here. I'm going to go right here. Okay, I'm going to attach that. And that. And that. And that. Okay? I'm going to make these maybe doubled. Adds a bit more texture to the operation. Okay. Oops. Another oops. Okay. And then we can go up to his I or her. Boy, this must be driving somebody crazy out there. Try to go around the pupil that you drew with the glint. And then for the half shade of the iris, you can just do hatching lines. So hatching lines are this. They're just parallel lines and then cross hatching is that but crossed okay so this is one level of shading this is a double level of shading okay up and then bring this back we're almost finished I guess we're finished I'm gonna ink wash them because I think it looks interesting okay so ink washing is these pens are water soluble and that's why I use them, actually. I have this other type of pen here, which is a Uniball Vision Elite or Uniball Vision pens. Uniball Vision are my favorite, actually. These Elites, they're okay. They're more expensive. They're not any better. I like the cheaper ones. Uh, I've been using the cheaper ones for a long, long time. So what would happen now if I... If I... I don't really want to... If I took this pen and I drew this whole thing on here right now and I took water over it, nothing, none of the ink would move, but if I took this half and half here, I'll do this in the next video. Remind me of that, or I guess whatever. Okay, so I'm going to ink wash this, okay? I feel like I'm getting off track here a little bit. Okay, so here we go, an ink wash. So I'm just spraying a little bit of water on my plate that I have off camera here. I just have a little watercolor plate going. And I'm gonna ink wash this just a bit. So what I'm using is a brush with just water on it. Okay, and if I agitate these lines, see, they turn into paint. So when you buy pens, always check to see if they're water soluble. I used to have a blue uh, ballpoint pen that had Chinese writing all over it, and it was the most washable ballpoint pen. It was unbelievable. It basically started my obsession with ink washing. I discovered it one day and I just could not stop. Okay, so take a little bit of that ink and in we go into the depths. Okay, so here's a depth. Here's a depth. Here's a depth. You don't have to do this part. I'm just doing this for your fun. Okay, and here is a depth. There we go, make them look a little 3D. Take a little bit here, just a little shadow under the eye to push that eye in. There you go, Light Fury. Thanks everybody, hope you enjoyed it. Thanks, bye.